Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new interview from MinMax. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, getting better. My name is Ben Hansen. We're very glad you found us. This is more than just an interview. This is more of a discussion between Joseph Ferris from Hayes Light, who is the director for It Takes Two, and then the lead on Psychonauts 2, Tim Schafer from Double Fine, the legendary Tim Schafer. So it felt like a nice time to get these two together to talk about what they see in each other's games, the state of the industry for platformers, the pros and cons of being an independent developer. We talk about it all. So if you enjoy this discussion, we'd always appreciate it if you subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel to help us do more stuff like this. And as always, the biggest way to support us is by going to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends, where you can help support independent games media and also unlock the podcast version of this interview, all of our other interviews, the podcast version of The Deepest Dive, which is our huge community game club discussions. We're doing one on Halo Infinite right now, so there's a lot to check out. We appreciate your support, but without further ado, here's Joseph Ferris and Tim Schaefer. Welcome to MinMax, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, nice to man. have Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of a weird reunion thing uh, for a very specific thing from like E3 2017, back on the Game Informer show. We had you both on on this tiny couch in a hotel, mm -hmm. uh, and that was to talk about the kind of reveal of Psychonauts 2, the very earliest phases, back when it was more of a Starbreeze project. <laughs> and wow. then also, it was when you were announcing A Way Out, Joseph. So it's fun that now this year, you two both released huge platformers, critically acclaimed at that. So congratulations, you guys. And uh, Joseph did two at the time he took me to do one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were on that couch in a mysterious hotel room. We were led up to a mysterious hotel room. Greg Rice was also on the couch. Yeah, and we, about, um, and we became fast friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was a great time actually. It's, it's one of the few interviews where you really. I don't know, were we drinking beer also? I yeah, remember. there's some beer. I remember you doing peck tricks. You were like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, ping pong balls on your muscles. Uh, it's good that I gave uh, gave a good impression. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of fun, actually, yeah. Now, I mean, this was too... I mean, Sam, damn, time flies by fast, man. Yeah. This was four yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, my how, God. Uh, Joseph, how are you cranking out these games so fast? What's your secret over there? What, what's the team's oh, secret? What's happening? Fast, I would say. I would actually say we talked a little bit about this, Tim, because I, I remember asking you, like, uh, don't you think, because you just told me, like, five to six years, Psychonauts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, five years. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there was a the reason for that, like because of I don't know technical, but but I just I remember asking you like, isn't it too long for a game development because you kind of get tired after so many years? Because for me, a three year cycle is kind of okay, maybe like three and a half. So, Not all so, of our games take that long. Like mostly, it's our two Psychonauts games both took five years, and often it's because yeah. like, the first two years of development, you're like, okay, wait, that's all wrong. That's all wrong. That's oh. A lot of like redo on stuff because um, mm -hmm. we try to find the right um, weird, trippy kind of level structure and everything. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they are. It is hard. It is hard for the team to work on something for five years straight. That's that's true. I'd much rather work for two. We did Secret of Monkey Island in nine months, so that was. Uh -huh. That is so yeah, mind boggling. For, for us at Hazelight, I think a three year cycle is quite good. Like, mm -hmm. a, a, a normally, a, a normally, I think how, how we try, I mean, we do also, of course, do a lot of trial and error testing and stuff, but we quite early figure out each what we're going to do, and then we, we, we kind of try to go with it as, as, as good as we can. And, and yeah, for yeah. me, myself, I can't go on for longer than, uh, I'm not going to say too much, because the corona time has actually slowed us down a little bit. But other than that, I hope we're going to keep the three to four year cycle. Yeah. Is I don't I mean, that's kind of a normal uh, production for a game, I, I guess, right? Isn't it, I mean, do we have like a normal time, Tim? You, you know this, you're way more experienced than me. It, it changes, like in the old days, it was always like 18 months, like a year and a half, and it just keeps getting longer. Every year, it's like they add another like year onto what a normal game development time. Uh -huh. it's, I would love to get down to three, to three years. So yeah. you have to tell me all your secrets, Joseph, for figuring out what you want to do sooner. Well, one of them is that we have the drawing board. Everyone hates it. That's the worst thing in the world. But, it's like, oh, but I couldn't but, tell until until later that it wasn't working. Oh, but what do you guys mean? You built the you built like the like the foundation of the game, but you feel like oh, it's not working. We got to restart it. Or, no, or no, a couple of levels, like a couple of levels. Like we develop a level, and they're like, this level is just not coming together. And we reboot a level, like a, you know, an individual level. It happened a couple of times. Um, mm -hmm. I would call for rebooting a level, and everyone would get mad at me but i was like i know oh. this, this has to go back to the drawing board oh wow okay that's okay i mean but but i mean it's, it's hard to say we have like a, a follow-up all the i mean i'm in the office all the time and doing the follow-up with the designers and everything and i mean we try as much as we can to 
you know, find the issues and the problem quite early as fast as we can. But of course, we missed that. I mean, I know there was a an ending in It Takes Two. That was a whole level that we took out quite late. And that was a lot of work that was thrown away. But, but mostly, actually, I think... Uh, we don't throw that much away. We quite early see that ah, this is going to work or not work. And then we, we, try, we try to, of course, you know, take down the amount of work we put in. But it's hard, it's hard to know sometimes. It's hard to know. But I think it has a little bit of my background in movies also because uh, like you, you, we, we kind of plan for the, for the game how it's going to look like a little bit more in the beginning, I think. Mm-hmm. I, but I'm not saying that we don't like go crazy and come up with all kinds of shit during the way. That we do, of course. And, and one of the other good tricks to have a good production is to have a few producers. We have one and a half, you could say. I mean, Issa is kind of an executive producer. Uh, you know, and, and then we have one, that's it. Because if you have too much production people, it's going to be too much like, uh, that's my approach to it, at least. Wait, what, what happens if you have too many producers? Sorry? What happens if you have too many producers? Things are too organized? Yeah, it's too organized. It's going to be like a, a lot of middle hands, a lot going on. It's better to have one or two people that have like a, a full control of what the go, goes on in the production. And it works for us quite well, actually. We're not that of a big team. We're like around 60, 65. Mm-hmm. How many are you, Tim? That's about the same price. Yeah. Okay, yeah. How many producers do you have? Like four. No. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Your producer is going to be mad at me now. <laughs> Not for long, though. Not for long. <laughs> I'm writing this down. I'm taking all these notes. All right? We got to respect yeah, I don't know, man. It's up. But we're also doing very different games in a sense. I mean, Psychonauts, I've only played the three first hours of Psychonauts, to be honest. I just, you know, I have a kid and it's very hard to. Uh, play so so but but they are two very different games i mean of course they share in common their platformer but in a sense they are two very different games I, I mm-hmm. yeah yeah i've i've played um a lot of it takes two with uh, my daughter so it's uh something we've really enjoyed uh playing together it's been really fun yeah what stands how out to you Tim? how did that work i played more of your game than you played in my life. <laughs> <laughs> i will i will sorry i will but can i ask you uh Playing with your daughter with that story that you're a couple wasn't a bit weird to play. Yeah? <laughs> well, it was funny because she's a you know she was very she's 13 now you know she's yeah. a, a tween teenager and she was rela- reacting to the story in a different way. like she was just like well it sounds like they should just get a divorce. <laughs> okay. She's like why are we trying to get them back together they should just they should really split up but we haven't finished it yet so don't spoil it so maybe no 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 I won't I won't I, I won't. You oh, know, I mean, things are gonna let's see yeah. how she goes. but. I was really impressed with the scope of the game and how different every level is and how uh, many different mechanics there are in it. That, that is something we do a lot. I've been doing since Brothers, really. I mean, if you look at the both Brothers and Way Out, it takes two. Something that uh, I'm a big fan of, I've been talking about a lot, is the variation of mechanic and especially having mechanics that reflect the story and so on. So whatever you play in the story, you should be playing. And, and that is, in general, what I feel. I mean, we talked a little bit about this in the breakfast as well. Like, I feel it's... Uh, Hopefully in the future we'll have more of that. But of course it costs a lot of money to create unique mechanics for every level and you polish them. Uh, but as you said also, Tim, which was a good point there, that uh, it also saves uh, times in a sense, because I know in Psychonauts you have to make every, you give you give all the tools pretty much from the beginning, right? I mean, you can you can, you can can just- You're in so much you go, but you have them the whole game. You might have them in different orders. So every level has to work with every power, but you yeah. have to, like the hammer and nail works on the hammer and nail level, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a good idea. I wrote that. I wrote that down too. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 def- it definitely, it definitely are challenged with that as well because the problem is with, with making a new mechanic every time is that you have to, you know, you can come up with a mechanic quite fast from a prototype phase, but then to take it to a place where it really feels nice and like you know create some nice puzzles and that really feels good and and polished, that's what takes time. That that's the danger I would say of having so many different mechanics. That was one of the, you know, worried, uh, worries we had during production, like how the f- will we be able to polish everything? I mean, the mini games, sure, some of them are not like super polished, but we were fine with that. But the mechanics had to be like super, like, uh, you know, polished and obviously the controls. The, I mean, do you guys have the same thing? I mean, I mean, it's a platformer, so it's like, um, 
a million tiny little details to get all that right. You know, yeah. just like fail landing on, on ledge and just grabbing a ledge and shimming and poles and, and all the, we have so many acrobatic different things that Brass can do. So the motion team, the player motion team was, you know, together the entire project just working on polishing Brass. So yeah, a million, a million things to, to do. I would say, I mean, I've only played three hours. The three hours till now that I played are quite varied actually for being a, 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 like a, a platform or, or for being the general game in, I mean, is that something you thought of? I mean, because it's a lot of variation in Cyclones, at least the three first hours. I think, I think, I mean, part of it's a sequel. So we wanted to keep the stuff that we did in the first game and then we had to add new stuff to it. So we definitely mm -hmm. were adding on. We took it, we removed a couple of things, but, you know, we were definitely adding on to Raz's things. He's both an acrobat and a psychic. So we have to, um, still fewer than Brutal Legends. Still have fewer mechanics than Brutal Legends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you, uh, oh, cool. are you both burned out on platformers at this point? Is one of those things of like, well, we all like Mario 64. Let's stick in this world. And then by the end of it, it's like, okay, this is way too much fine tuning and detail work. Now I feel like this urge to, usually we do the opposite of whatever we did last. And, you know, we switch genres so much at our company. Um, and we think it would be nice to do something that use platforming again, just so we can benefit from all the things we learned. Like we put so much work into adding that to Unreal, you know, you work on Unreal and, and it's, it's uh, a lot of the platforming stuff we you cooked up from scratch. And so... Um, I'd like to get, you know, you, I keep keep getting better at it. Yeah. And, and I think actually platformers, I mean, if you compare it to movies a little bit, because that's my, it's almost like making a comedy, you know, yeah. like a, a truly, I mean, you know, the cliche where you say a, a serious actor cannot be funny, but a funny actor can be serious. I mean, it's truly hard to make, to write something, uh, com uh, you know, uh, like a, something funny or make something funny, but it doesn't get the, uh, right, the, the recognition it should and I think platform is kind of the same thing you know I mean when you when you hear platform you kind of think more you know towards like kids game Mario or something it's simpler it's just like jump around and take this but it's actually in a sense I would argue way more challenges from your third, like regular I mean action adventure game because there's so many more details to it that need to function and the best in the in 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 that genre is extremely good. We're talking about Mario and everything. So do you have like a real, so everybody will compare you to Mario pretty much. Like, oh, is this like Mario? You know, but right. like, that's the best thing. You see what I mean? So, and it, it, and there is so many, like Tim says, so many details and everything, like how you move, how you control, how, and everything. There's so much to it, you know? And that's why I'm very happy that both these games are getting their recognition because they are really, both of them are super, a lot of work behind it. I mean, and, and super well crafted, I would say. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Tim, are you able to just enjoy It Takes Two? Or are you still in the designing platformer headspace of just jotting down? That's a good idea. Like, are you looking through the Matrix code and seeing exactly how Hazelight <laughs> put this thing together? Uh, definitely um, enjoying it. But when you play someone else's game, you're like, oh, how do they get this done? Like, they're just like, when I'm playing it and the, the, um, I wonder. I wonder with that game if it was it was psychological because you because the characters are really tiny physically, and so it's so surprising when the world is so big and it just keeps going and going and going and there's another completely different world. There's another different sequence, and so um, just really the the scope. It, I was enjoying it, but part of me was like, oh my god, I'm, this seems like a lot of work. It's like a, maybe like an animator watching a stop motion film. You're like, oh my gosh, but um, <laughs> uh, definitely, I I, I love comic games. I would like to make a comic game someday. We keep we keep bringing it up um oh can we have just a level this co-op or something like that in like playable we wanted to have literally be playable in, in one of the levels in our game but unless you think about it from the very very beginning and like design your game for it as joseph knows like you co-op's not something you can add lightly to a game obviously you have to like, no. think about it from the beginning especially a narrative based game where there's cutscenes and stuff like having oh. all that stuff happen with two players and they're in different locations you can't you know, like open world all the things that we have like you need to be um designing for co-op obviously from the beginning for sure yeah yeah and, and that's what i hope i really hope you guys do a co-op only experience because really in a sense hazel is only doing that. i mean i know a lot of people say compare this to for instance portal 2 or other split screen but those are single play games that have done the co-op campaign and so on and most games have a single play camp campaign that you add on a split screen mode to and i think like if it's a shooter whatever you pretty much are you know you know, are each the same character shooting around it. But these games are actually designed from the beginning as co-op and written for co-op. You're pretty much playing a unique character. And that's a way different approach on how you do it. And like Tim says, 
You cannot just, I mean, I know some people might think that, oh, why not take Uncharted 4 and just put a split screen on it? And, and mm -hmm. that, that's definitely not that easy. But I hope now, I mean, that uh, both are way out and it takes two has proven that there definitely is a lot of people who want to play this game because we are selling like big numbers, to be honest, like for being, I mean, more than some AAA titles in a sense. So there's definitely people that want to play this type of game. So I really hope, Tim, that you guys do a co-op only game. That would be super cool, actually. And you, um, but you took a big risk in saying only. Like you could have had, put some time into possibly AI or something for Like you can't, they're co-op only, right? Only, only. Yes, like co-op only. Yeah, that was super important. I mean, it's the same like with the way I was very hard on this. I, I mean, EA wasn't like, uh, they were very skeptical like most were because how will we market this and how will, who will play this? But I mean, we've seen obviously that there's a lot of people playing this. So an AI control, I mean, of course, we, we would be probably bigger if we had an AI control, but it's it's... It's, it's very hard. hard to do way out, and how do you do that with AI too? That's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super hard. Like, how would you do it? Takes two with the AI controlled par partner. Like, it it would be so weird. I think it's not the same. Thing. Also, the whole fact is that the whole idea also, is that you play it together. I mean, part of the narrative and part of the storytelling is that you play it together, solve it together, communicate together. Because for me, I think the experience in the couch is as important in this as what goes on on the screen. You know, so so and with an AI partner, it's not the same thing. You know. But in, in, in a way, you also gave away the second copy? Yes, Only yes. And, both, and it takes two, yeah. And it takes two. We gave for free. And that also makes sense because there's a logic to I mean, that's how I think about it. It's a logic about it because I thought like, okay, if you're playing it in a couch and you're two people, you have one game. If you play it online, it should be the same. You shouldn't pay double the money yeah. for, because you're playing it online. And again, like there was a lot of skepticism, but we've seen that actually that has made sales even better i think because people feel it's more worth it so but so i'm not a buy it, you someone buys it and the other person downloads it for free yes and then you're then you're not playing together that second person can't play it by themselves unless they buy it yes exactly so you can always send the friends pass for them to play with you but you own the game yeah so we, we don't give away two copies you get one copy but you can invite as many as you want online so so you can down you can download you can have thousand friends play with you for mm -hmm. for like for free and they don't have to pay for it you know yeah but i'm not the marketing guy again i i always go from like what do i want to play and 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 uh, what 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 do i think makes sense and i think and i think in a sense that's that's what's I think for if you you know if you feel it in your heart it makes sense I think people will feel it in a sense you yeah. understand what I mean or something like yeah. that yeah you know at least one person will play it <laughs> I mean I'm what, just, what? you know at least one person will play it you yeah you <laughs> I mean this is sure. you know, nobody sure. likes it even you yeah. <laughs> that's the amazing thing Tim about you know wanting to develop Psychonauts two for what sixteen years has this been the mm -hmm. goal and like holding that passion of just like I think there's gonna be an audience for this I think there's gonna be an audience for this like holding that passion for sixteen years is an amazing feat like it's a miracle that first game happened and now it's a miracle that Psychonauts 2 came out this year and that it's so good like what is that like to keep that faith in yourself for a 16 year span I, I mean it, we you know we walked away from it for a while and it didn't think it was ever going to be possible to come back to it just because um of, you know we were always chasing deals we were always just seeing what we could get made it didn't seem that would be ever be possible to get made um, and we did pitch it a few times and get turned down and then we used crowdfunding to, to, to do it. So we were in right. this mode of like, you know what, let's go back with crowdfunding to do all these things like adventure games that we couldn't do before, but the fans would let us. And, um, and that helped us get started with it. And then we, you know, amazingly found homes both with Starbreeze and then with them, um, with Microsoft. But, you know, I just feel really connected to, um, it's just years of spending time with the fans of that game. Like everyone from like 13 year old kids who would like send us cookies back in 2000, you know, now they're all grown up and they're working in the games industry. Like my nephew who like has pestered me for years to like make a sequel. And so I'm really like, I feel very in touch with those people. And I knew that if we got it wrong, I would hear directly from my nephew. From all these people. <laughs> like, I, I felt like, um, uh, you know, you feel like you, you couldn't, you just can't get it wrong. You just can't do it wrong. And, and I think we, we world build so much, like we build such deep stories, backstories for the characters and their relationships. So they live inside of your mind. So we go back to revisit them. They feel really present. And we were so lucky that we had all the same actors and all the same artists, a lot of the same artists and a bunch of new people for new ideas, but we had the same, you know, concept artists and um, every department had somebody that worked on the first game. And so we were able to really remind each other, of, you know, how we did stuff and what it felt like. And 
Um, but really having Richard Horowitz, for example, do the voice of Raz again and be able to sound exactly like he did 10 years ago was amazing. A lot of help. Yeah. What's been the, the best reaction so far? Out of all the reactions to Psychonauts 2 actually releasing, is the one that really means the most to you? Oh, man. Well, my nephew, you really okay, played all the way go. through and he liked it. He's, <laughs> he's like 25 years old now, but he's like, oh, you know, it was like that it paid off for him, you know, because it's some things when they come back, it's just a miracle that they exist. Like when like Force Awakens, like when like Star Wars comes back, you're like, it's really is it going to come back and it comes back I and mean, it's good at all. It's like, wow, that was a miracle. But it, can, it felt like we really made people feel like they felt when they played the first game, which was important. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's going to be, Psychonauts is your what? Your clerks. It's your before Sunrise trilogy. You'll just revisit it every 15 years or something with a new entry. Yeah, kind of every 15 out. years, exactly. <laughs> it's scientific, yeah. It'll um, be the next day. It'll still just be the next day. Of course. How well. many, how long was the, like, anima- like actual animation, the movie? How, how, how long was that? Just in Psychonauts 2, there's six hours of cutscenes. Oh my insane. god! People don't it's like that. Like hours? Things, how, how long is the game? Uh, you know, I think we said like thirty hours. I think it's you know. Holy sh! <laughs> it's a very, it's very uh, narrative heavy game. It's got a lot of story. Oh my god! That, that's on six hours of keyframe. Everything was keyframed. Yeah. And I did it all myself. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 myself. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, no, we have a, a great team of animators and we work with great outsourcing studio. We had to outsource, um, but we did a lot of the, an, you know, a lot of the um, animatics and the layouts in-house and then uh, sent them to outsource to do. Oh, crazy. Yeah. I mean, we had, we, we our game is roughly 13 to 14 hours. I think some, and we have two and a half. And I'm, 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 I'm trying to take it down more for the next one, you know, because yeah, I'm trying I mean, to take it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the problem is a co-op game. You don't have the same focus in a single player game. You can focus in a different way, you know, because when you're a co-op, normally you talk to each other. So you almost have to, you know, get the people's attention somehow. Because it's, it's really almost awkward different. to sit there and watch a cutscene together because you want to talk. Yeah. To each other. Yeah. Yeah. Which it shouldn't be because we look at a movie together. I mean, in a sense, you know, so you experience stories. Normally you experience them together. Like when you look at a movie or, I mean, you know, in the theater or in the cinema or stuff like that. But in gaming, people are like, uh, uh, you know, uh, tend to like talk more to each other. But they're still in the story somehow. I, I don't know why. But you have to look at it different. But, you know, sometimes when you rely on certain barks, when you when you play a, a single play game, normally you're alone with your headphones or whatever. Then you can, like, hear the details in the story. But in a co-op game, especially when you design it to always, like, have co-op in mind, you need to communicate and coordinate. Then it's even harder to get these details. So there are challenges from that. But even though, like, we would love to take down the cutscene even more, you know. Yeah. But it's interesting. I want to ask you, Tim, like doing a, a sequel because we haven't really done it at Hazelight at all. And, and, and is it is it like a is it because it must be because I'm, I'm just playing with the idea. Like, what if we would do It Takes Two, number two, or whatever what that would it be called? Three. Yeah. It Takes Three, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what would that mean? Is it, because the, then it, is it easier or is it harder? You know what I mean? Because it feels <sighs> like you have a lot of the, the you know, the the core, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, we, this is in some ways one of our first sequels. We'd done a Costume Quest 2, we did a little um, Connect Party game sequel, but we always said no sequels, just because every story was complete, you know, it ends and it wraps up and we don't want to go back to it. But um, so I guess, too, I did have like a little Google Doc that started back in 2005 of like extra ideas, other ideas, and what the sequel could be. And there are some things we planted in the first game to like, like this, the logs around the campfire are all like plant, like, um, little stubs of stories that we finished off in, in the second game. And um, I wasn't sure that we'd ever do it, but I still kept the list of like an idea about a, 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 what if you went to the mind of a gambler and what if, you know, those were some really old ideas that we've been holding on to for 15 years. So we had that. Um, it, it, it was easier in that we had the core, like the heart of how the game should feel. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if you don't have to discover the first game, we're discovering what second this is. Mm. So we didn't have to do that, but we also were constrained by it. So we had to make sure we hit that again. We couldn't decide we were something else. You know, in Psychonauts, we could solve any problem by just making up something new. But in this game, we had yeah. to make sure we fit the first game. But it helped us make decisions. Like, no, this is this. We're going to go this way because this is true. You know, you're just imagine that someone who just played the first game the day before, like they'll remember, and we got to get we got to get that right. So it's just it's just if you if you're if you're, for me just I really felt in touch with those characters and I had these leftover uh, loose ends that I wanted to to tie up. 
Like, I don't know. We have a couple more ideas if we want to do another one, but um, I just don't want to be, you know, we live in a world where so many IPs are just kind of wrung out like dish rags, you know, just like, oh, we can get a couple of more stories out of this uh, <laughs> towel, you know, like, <laughs> and just feel like, just leave it alone. Like it was a, um, you know, some things are meant to, some worlds were crafted to have a certain amount of stories told about them. And then it's like a certain amount of people living in a house or something. You just can't put any more in there and just leave it alone. Move, go make up another world. Go make up a new IP. <laughs> but I think um, there's often room for really But But I'm thinking also gameplay-wise, because the first one was released when? 2000 and, uh, when? Five. 2005. 2005. So it's 16 years ago. I mean, I mean, just looking at games from 2005 and today, you have different expectations, especially for a platform, how they play, how they feel, and how they, they could you use anything from the original? I mean, because well, I can imagine. Not code, you, or we didn't use any code, or, you know. No, no, just, no, I mean, not like that. But the models in and just restart them, like sometimes use them as a base for the new model, but we wouldn't mm. just use the, any of the old animation. Or, ah. So you pretty much had to start from the beginning ish. Yeah, with that model. Uh, yeah. I mean, if we were doing it, like some games, like you see, like Yakuza seem like they are going back to this a similar, like, they are using some of the same messes, but they're remastering. It's like they're almost remastering and then adding to this world and making it bigger. And um, that's yeah. probably if you're, if you're making sequels much more soon than 15 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the yeah. way to go, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a, a weird thing, but thinking about you two and the similarities with you two, uh, both very big personalities in your studios. And I'm curious how you've been sitting with that. Uh, Tim, I know you've had longer to sit with this and ruminate on that idea of your name being on the box and all that fun stuff. Um, but I'm curious, is there a drive within both of you to kind of diminish that and make sure the team is raised up a little bit more? Like Tim, for example, I noticed that in the Psychonauts 2 trailers, instead of saying, from the minds of Tim Schafer, I think at some point you started saying, from the minds of Double Fine. She's like, oh, that's a very nice small adjustment. Was that a mm -hmm. conscious discussion within the studio for you, Tim? I mean, I, for years we fought to have things like our name put on the box, Second so Lucas Arts. Right. Um, and part of it, I was just—it wasn't just our own vanity, but it was—it um, was to humanize the games are made by people, so people understand they're not made by co corporations; they're made by human beings. So you start to see it as an art form more than just a product. And um, it did benefit our careers to have our names on there. But um, it, it, I started the company; and it was kind of all about me, like all about putting my face out there and getting attention for that. But um, after uh you know brutal legend we started having these art jams where, or game jams where a lot of different people led projects and so now at the company of other people like lee petty um lee projects uh and uh and some other folks and we, we i've always tried to build this there are other people at the company with ideas besides me and I, we're trying to build capacity for other teams to build things besides besides me we want you know double fine to have a um Double Fine has a value outside of me, I think. You know what I mean? But it's not... Um, it, it, a, little, a lot of that is on purpose, for sure. And it didn't start until about 10 years into the, the company. Huh. Do you see a similar trajectory for Hazelight, Joseph? Uh, I, I, I haven't thought about it that way. It's just that... I, I, don't, I don't know, for some reason... I mean, this has always been... I mean, I'm talking about me as a person. It's also in the movie industry as well. I don't know. There's something about me that makes... I guess people you know focus sometimes on my personality because I don't know I I can do some weird stuff sometimes, <laughs> but how, the way we work with in the studio it's it's a very flat stru structure. I think I think people would be very surprised if if, they, if you get to Hazla because I think one of the key things that uh, I'm very good at is pushing the team and I often say to wake up their like creative monster. I keep pushing them all the time like it's. It's really, I say to design, no, no, we're not going to have that. I say it sometimes when I really like don't believe it. But every time I come up with ideas and say like, what do you think of this? Are you getting excited about this? What do you think of this? So it's, it's an extreme collaboration. I mean, it, it is definitely uh, a game by Hazelight, like by us. But of course, the ground vision comes most of the time from me. But I don't know. We haven't thought about how we market it. It's not that I have, that have, I have my name on the box or anything like that. Uh, to be honest, but uh, it just happens to be that I am the, you know, the 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 person's uh, the the person that is like a 
that directs and and and, and, and the most of the time writes the game. So it, it becomes a natural thing, you know. Right. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes it's good to connect something to 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 a, to a person or something. But we have also our developers talking about the design stuff that they get. I mean, our audio team talks a lot about you know in in their forums and stuff like that. I think I answered the question. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's always going to be a place for that. I think there's always be people who want to work on a game that you or I did. Um, but there's also people after a certain amount of time in the company, like for us, it was like ten years. People people grow in their careers. So there's like people who are artists and now want to be lead artists and lead artists who want to do something else. And you know, if you only have one lead program or one lead artist, there's only so much growth within your company they can do. So at some point, they start bumping up against the the ceiling, the ceiling is you. And it's like, it's like, unless they bump you off, no one's ever going to be able to grow past that. So having multiple projects was a way to um, allow that kind of growth where someone else could have my job and someone else could be, now we have, you know, all of a sudden we have three lead uh, programmers and three lead artists and people can, can grow um, in their careers and not feel, um, not have to leave the company in order to become a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, Tim, that even in the credits for Psychonauts 2, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you don't even list a director or a creative director. Uh, don't we? I, I don't <laughs> think so. Maybe that wasn't much of a discussion. It was just a, an accident, a typo yeah. almost. But I was like, that's a, that's a bold move of just saying, I think maybe it's just as writer, Tim Schaefer, and then the rest of the team in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was a lot of... Um, it was complicated. Credits can often be complicated. I kind of understand why sometimes companies just put all their names in a long, long big list, but right. I want to give people credit for what they what they actually do. So we put a lot of thought into um, having the credits be fair. Yeah. However, I have to be very clear by saying this, and I think it goes, I mean, that's my approach to it. It's very important to have one or two you know, the visionaries or creative leaders says, this is where we're going. And I know like, uh, I, I know many teams like, uh, it, it, it doesn't mean that that person or those people need to come up with everything, but you need to have someone that's leading the game. I think it's very, because otherwise it could be very like a, what do you mean, uh, spread out like a, that. It's, it's not going to be a clear vision, you know, I would say, because you need to have someone that takes those decisions, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And the the places and companies that say they don't have what? The, the, the team also wants some, because we did like an internal uh, thing where we asked like, you know, when you do, when you do the, after a project, what is it called? A survey, after a project? yeah, 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 and and it was very clear that it's it's really good that they even wanted more of that, you know, like a direction, okay, where to go, you know, it's, it's super clear that that's what they really want, you know. But like an organizing, almost like an editor, like in, to inspire people and to edit and to make you know final decisions because a lot of creative decisions can be solved a million different ways. There's not often, there's not always just one answer, and some people just like somebody just pick one, so you like, <laughs> <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of places that say they don't have that kind of organization or they say it's, it's just a big, uh, flat, um, you know, uh, everybody has equal voice. But I think often in those situations, it's not an official title, but there's one person on the team who's more of a bully or like you know, one person on the team who like is getting their way more than other people. So even though it is, um, there's no official lead, there's, all, there's often just the loudest voice who ends up leading it. So it's good to have an official um, person and then that can change from project to project. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I always say that uh, the games are haze light. They decide what they want to be. It's almost like they are their own, you know, et- the game entity. Itself. Yeah, the game is, it lives. And we're, I'm, I'm, but, but I'm just there to, like, uh, you know, help it. Like, okay, we're going this way. Let's go this way, which, which make it uh, quite clear. And that's also, I think, speaking of production and saving time, the clearer idea of direction, I think, the more effective you are also. Uh, it feels like for us at least, you know. Yeah. Uh, Haze Light, do you want to stay independent moving forward? I'd imagine people are at least knocking on your door. And Tim, I'm curious if you have any recommendations for <laughs> the world of independence versus going with a big publisher who improved Psychonauts 2 from the outside at least. But really, did, did they have so much time, Microsoft, with you guys? I mean, didn't they come in the end of the production? Or Yeah, and they definitely helped support. We basically added a year, I think, onto our, our cycle. We were able to add a year of polish, you know, and, and uh, improvements to it. So it definitely worked out uh, well for us. Um, I think mm-hmm. I think just the situation was a little different, as he explained to me at breakfast. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we're, we're, do, we're on need. I mean, we have, here's the thing. <laughs> Nobody believes me when I this, say this. We have ES publishers, but they don't say anything. I mean, literally not a thing. Like we decide <laughs> everything. No, no. And, and then they know this. Like sometimes if, if, if someone at EA says, uh, can you send the build? And the producer will say like, look, I'm not even going to ask Joseph this, you know, because you know what the answer will be. Because we literally do what we want to do. And, and, and obviously it's, we've done, we've been very successful with this. That's why they leave us alone also. They don't they respect the vision. But you have to remember, we're not owned by EA. I think in your right. case, you're owned by Microsoft. Maybe they can put a lot uh, different kind of pressures on you. And I can't, I, re I really can't work that way. So if you ask me like, uh, if, at one point in the future, I will work with the people. I said, yes, I would. But then I would make sure in the contract that it's going to be like not only full creative control, but the decisions, everything. And, and there's going to be so much to, in the contract that really, because otherwise I can't, I, I can't, uh, uh, you know, work, I think. That, 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 that's, that's my general feeling. But, but we are in a position where we, didn't, we really don't need a publisher in a sense. You know, we are, we, we could pretty much publish our own games if we want to. But of course, it's easier to have someone like EA that, that helps and support uh, a little bit like Tim is explaining with Microsoft here. You know, so but I don't know what the future holds, as long as we can keep fucking shit up and making really crazy games. <laughs> Do you still feel like you can fuck shit up under Microsoft there, Tim Schafer? Well, you know, I've got to avoid certain wording, but I, <laughs> I think that was something oh, I've you do. I find you're, you're a fucking legend, Tim. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Like, what do you mean? You're a super nice, humble guy as well. I mean, you're, you're, you're clearly not an asshole, that's for sure. So whatever you say, they're not going to be, you're, you're, you're always going to be like, uh, you respected. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like you could, you could have, I'm, I'm surprised you get a no from publisher even. <laughs> well, um, we we made really clear before the acquisition that we could do what we wanted creatively, and that we maintain our own image and our own branding and our own you know our own uh, PR and everything. So we so we're still operating as an independent company. We just have a parent company, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's certain like um, there's a, there's more like there's some you know base level like financial type integration stuff, and, and but it's not like they come and they inspect or they want builds of everything, and they they don't come and get involved in the creative decisions at all like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah nice. Phil Spencer is super cool. I've known him for a while. I mean, he seems super cool. I'm not sure how involved he is there. Uh, I guessing. I'm he, guessing he's. Yeah, he tweets the excuse playing C play all the way through Psychonauts too. He's always been very supportive of it. And that's awesome. Like him. Yeah, we. I mean, we've known uh, Phil since the first Psychonauts. He was up there at uh, near the end of uh, Psychonauts one. And now you get those weird situations of going into a store and seeing, I don't know, Raz on a bag of gummy worms or something i saw I was like oh this is such a weird era yeah exactly hey this is nothing as an indie we would not have been able to do ourselves <laughs> <laughs> that's that pretty cool. sweet uh no congratulations to both of you for releasing some bold games uh, platformers obviously in 2021 who would have thunk it it's awesome and just such weird games and the fact that they both found success is amazing like i was really i was debating this on our podcast tim about like I think Psychonauts 2 has to be the weirdest Microsoft funded game of all time or Microsoft published game, right? Like what else is a contender just on the weird spectrum? <laughs> I mean, we definitely serve a purpose. I feel like we have a responsibility as a, we have our section of the of the portfolio that we need to represent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think it proves that people want uh, to be surprised in entertainment. Like I think people accept that you, know, you go to movies and movies are so often they can be really predictable and games also can be very predictable and i think it, it you start to fall asleep as an audience and then again a movie comes along and you're like oh my god like um the first time i saw like blue velvet or something like i was like oh my god it's like, like that's right movies can be surprising and shocking and surprising <laughs> and, and games can be that that's what we really want every time but we don't often get it and if you watch big like a big uh some studios show at e3 you often see like like five games in a row that look exactly the same and you'll be like, um, why, why is it that the case? Don't, don't people want something really original and different? Um, and people think it's safer, I think, to make games that don't look original and different. But I think there's a lot of games. If you look at the very bottoms of the sales charts, there's a lot of games that are very safe looking, you know, very imitative and very, very much like every other game. And I think all the really big hits, all the really big transformative games have looked really unique, you know, and strange. Yeah. And actually, speaking of unique, we had a huge problem with It Takes Two. We didn't really, I mean, comparing to A Way Out, I mean, uh, you know, because in a sense, that was quite easy to sell because it's like two guys escaping prison. Everybody can relate to that. It's kind of a easy sell type of game. It's a, 
third person action adventure it looked like you know you could you could like you could get an idea but with this one like what is it, it was a strange book we, we did a trailer like it didn't catch up we really had some serious problem before the game was released to get attention to get it right. going uh we tried everything like uh but, but we knew we had a great game but we didn't know like uh like we didn't know how, how to how to get it going and we still don't know we have seen that i think almost half of our player base is in china for some reason i don't know really? why like, yeah like uh, i think like almost like half our like it's crazy would have done success there and i, I don't know why and and, and he, i mean every, obviously every publisher wanted to make a you know a hit there or something sure uh, 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 but we don't really know why i mean they say it's because someone said because there's no microtransactions but other games are released without us i don't think it's that some other might say that's because of collaboration but i mean you have other co-op games that have been released that are maybe not similar to this but still like so this game was super hard to i remember we released the trailer we were like we're not getting we were like not even close to the attention we got for a way out and the way i think I mean, we were lucky because, you know, Hazelight and me was known from the press, so people obviously want to talk to us and play it. And once they have had hands on, then we started to see like, oh, the reaction, how they felt. So kind of like a, it became kind of a, what can you say? The, like the, yeah, the, the effect of people talking to each other, you know, the, yeah. like, a, yeah, it was super hard in the beginning. And at one point, like, what, how, how the hell will we get this out there? And sometimes it just happens like that, you know. The games don't get the attention they they should for some reason. I don't know why. Brightly colored, stylized looking games, and I feel like I've struggled with that in my whole career because I keep making these games with art style that really appeals to me, and we're often met with a confusion of like, well, that looks like a kids game. Like ever since you know Day of the Tentacle, it's like that looks like a, a kids game, but it's played by adults. Like, how do you get adults to? to play a game that looks uh, so colorful and, and bright. But Double Fine and you, Tim Schafer, is such a strong brand. Does that, don't you think, uh, don't you think, I mean, you could probably answer this. What about the games you release? Isn't there an immediate effect and attention to them just when it's your name and Double Fine on it? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, we can definitely get press and that kind of attention, but to get a players who are, um, uh, to get like a, like, players of a certain age who want uh, you know a tough and gritty experience to play something that looks kind of wholesome and, and family oriented <laughs> can sometimes be a challenge but i think i think there's just a lot of uh, untapped like family market out there like like people mm. who want to play games with their kids and things like that that um it, that there are a lot of games that dark dark and gritty that i think would be hugely popular i mean like minecraft for example <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, and especially the fact that both games are on Game Pass now. Like, I know I've had that situation with my nephews of like, what's good to play on Game Pass? And it's like, oh, here are two great platforms you can play with the family, even if it's it takes two and you have to have some weird conversations with the kid you're playing with around the context, but it's still a great one to jump in and just have a great time with. So it's got to open up to a whole new audience there for both of you. Like, have you seen the numbers <laughs> jump up with, in- with uh, Game Pass and it takes two, Joseph? Sorry, if I've seen, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've seen an increase, but I don't know the real numbers that are what it affected, but I mean, sales for it takes it has been amazing. I think we're up to how many millions it is. It's like, Let me take a drink so I can do a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I remember, I think, I think we're, we have at least sold over three for sure. Oh, nice. Or like, yeah, yeah, over three million. I think we're almost 3.5 million units. And it's it, it was really that that's quite high, and it's and it keeps on like selling. It's crazy. It it, it really is crazy. I don't know. It, may, it probably helps that it's popular in China for some reason. But th- these are quite big numbers. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, now we get into technical details. Did you localize in China? Did you? I mean, Isa, what the, Isa, do you know this? Isa, did we? The the producer on the call. I, I don't think so. Let me double check this. But I'm, I don't think we did. No. Huh. No, I don't think we did. Huh. You, you, we have we have uh, the subtitles in China, I think. Oh, you but do have Chinese subtitles. I think we have subtitles, yeah. But I, I have no clue why it got so popular. There. I had just an interview this weekend with some with a Chinese. Some I don't know what it was, but they were like super excited. I'm like, okay, That's and it's awesome. crazy. Yeah, way out didn't do so well there. I mean, I don't know how Psychonauts did. If 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 or if you've tapped into China in other games you've done. Uh, um, I haven't looked into the numbers specifically for that, but I feel like it would do better if we did a localization. Like, did a, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have no clue. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really into marketing and numbers. Uh, this is the stuff they tell me. Like, it's going very well. I just like, uh, 
I'm just, I I was just the they're huge. They're huge. I don't care about them. They're yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I know. They're really big. <laughs> no, but it's like they keep selling. Like it's 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 looking very good and everything. Nice. So, oh, that's but, great. Uh, hey, Tim. Uh, before we go, gotta ask uh, the documentary about Soccer Nuts Two. You mentioned years ago you were filming. Uh, is there any roadmap for that? Yeah, we filmed every. Uh, it's probably gonna come out in the new year. It's everything's filmed. It's just being edited. Um, there were some technical like hard drive scares for some Oh <laughs> for no! Some but it's all it's all there. It's all saved. Um, yeah, just like with Broken Age, we let the team in all the meetings and they filmed. And we had a lot of ups and downs on this project. There was a lot of roller coasters and some strife. If there's some strife in the middle of it, but um, hopefully it'll be um, fun to watch us put this game together and uh, not not too tense. Oh, Super cool to do the documentary. Maybe I should do that on the game we're doing now, actually. Uh, you should do it. I mean, we had a team. Uh, that's why we did Broken Ages, that this documentary crew, two-player productions, wanted. they had done the documentary on Minecraft, and they wanted to do a documentary about us. And we so we did this Kickstarter campaign that got really huge to do this uh, crowdfunding campaign. But it, I just am always into showing people, pulling back the curtain, as we say, letting people see how games are made. Because when I was a kid, I couldn't imagine. I love video games, but it never occurred to me to get a job in video games because I thought they were done by these, like, super smart brainiacs, like scientists, like the Atari was like this magical name. I couldn't imagine that it was like people just like me inside. Um, and so, uh, and then as I, you know, finally got around to starting my own company, I was like, oh, that's right. Any dummy can do this. Like, it's just like, it's not, I mean, it's hard. It's not, it's not easy. It's just that um, uh, it's being done by people who are not a whole mag layer of magnitude smarter than you. And, and I, I wanted to show also how hard it is that, that people care, people who make games care so much about them and they put so much work into them. And, uh, and part of me was just, I want people to know that because they react to games in a way of like, they don't understand how much of a labor of love they are. So, mm-hmm. so making this documentary allows us to show um, how we sometimes don't know what we're doing and we make mistakes and we have to like talk through these problems. And, um, and also how much the, the, team, the team cares and how every single decision, everything you interact with in the game was somebody's little moment of, of, of caring and how much thought went into it. So, yeah, well, I'm really looking good. forward to it's it. Been great. And, just, and Joseph, you can watch the old one, watch the double fine adventure. It's on YouTube. It's free. Yeah. Nice after you watch it. Take some notes. Yeah, I remember now seeing your uh, Kickstarter campaign, actually. This was 2013 that became so... You actually, you were the one that kicked the Kickstarter, you could say. Like yeah, for- yeah, we were the first like, really big games Kickstarter. Like, uh, yeah. We weren't the first million That's dollar cool, Kickstarter. Man. We were the first over a million. Yeah, are you do you, are you uh, do you have like uh, acting background like you because you have a very like uh, you no, know comedic no 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 but I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying you have a very like comedic timing when you talk and are in front of a camera. Have you been acted acting before? Nope, just goofing off on video for video games. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, a natural talent, you mean, like a natural comedian. Uh, yeah, natural but, ham and the lust for attention. <laughs> <laughs> but Joseph, attention. if you ever go back to the film world, I mean, here's your here's your star right here. If you want to make a new film, Joseph, I'm just saying. You yeah, can, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do, we'll do. All right, you can I'm going to make an action movie with, with Tim and the... <laughs> Hell yeah. Lock and load, lock and load, lock and load. Cool. Well, hey, uh, both of you, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Congratulations to you and the teams for pulling this off. Uh, amazing work this year, guys. So really appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you. Nice to talk to both of you, Joseph Hans. Absolutely. Nice to meet you again, Tim. <laughs> for sure. You take care, guys. Yep. And thank you so much for watching or listening to this yeah, interview from Minmax. Games, and I've made another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank you so much All for right. watching or listening to this interview from Minmax. Uh, you can always subscribe to our channel. Others, uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to Minmax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.